Welcome again to another video around the One Identity Manager API. As you may have seen in the past, we published a couple of videos talking about the One Identity Manager API. And as typical, if you just end such a project, somebody comes around the corner and asks you, do you have considered, in my case, the table object? And my answer was, no, of course not. I have no idea what the table object is. And then you have to start to reinvestigate and figure out that there is something you have not considered in your video series, but it is important, like the table object. The good message here is you can live without the table object, like I was doing the last 20 years. But it is much better to use it if you know about it. And so I like to show you something which is an extension to the type wrapper videos we show in some other videos, and it is named the table object. And now have fun with that specific video. And please note that even the table object will not avoid that you have to work with the database model and have to know something about the database structure. As you easily can see on the screen, there is an example for a standard type wrapper. In that specific example, there is an object o person underscore tw, and this specific object, it's of type person and it's based on the session. With that, as you can see in the width, it is easy to use column names as properties. That means I have to hit the dot and I get a selection of existing column names, which is pretty good because after that, I can just assign values to the properties as it is to see here. On the other hand side, if you look into this session construction, session source gets single value, it's the way to get for a where clause a single value somewhere out of the database. Then I have to define, as you can see it in the first line, department and UID department, which are text strings. That means I have to know my database model. I have to copy in the table name, which is the first parameter, and a second parameter, the UID department. This is something to know. That means I can type it, and I have to type it, and I can make typos, especially if I'm too fast. The question now is, is there a way to avoid that and to handle that more or less in the same way than I handle the column names in the front? The second question here is, if I move to my second example, what will I do if I use, for example, not a person object, I need an identity object. Identity objects are single objects. That means they could be everything, a person, a hardware, whatever else exists in Identity Manager. Later on, the object gets based on session source like the other and with create new of type person, I get my person object like before. In difference to what we saw before, I have now to use put value, which is another way to assign columns to my specific properties. And as you as well can see, the person, the first name, the last name, all of this are strings I have to define on my own. How to do that? That's pretty easy. I just move into my object browser I select my person object, I figure out which columns exist, here they are, and then I just copy or type the name that stands here in the caption for a specific field. So for example, if I'm searching for something like the given name, I have to go into the details until I find something which is named, for example, the last name, and here it is. And then I know I have to use the property last name back into my code. I can put it here as a parameter into that function. Great. The difference between the first and the last example is that in the first example, we partially can use type wrappers. And in the last example, we are not able to use type wrappers because of this identity object, which at the end is something different like a person object, which is always based on person. A real cool solution could be to use something that allows me to type in correctly all of these column and table references without looking into the object browser and copying the information from one tool to the other. To do that, our developers in Dresden was just creating something which is named the table object. Let me show how that works. Therefore, I just replace, for example, the first name by something that starts with the word table. It is an object, and because of that, I have to delete as well the double quotes. I type table, I press the dot, 
and now I get a list of existing tables in Identity Manager. The person table, I get it with a space, is here something I want to have the column from. I type a dot as well and I now get the column names. The first name is what I like to get and I'm done. Looking into that, you can see there is now table.person.firstName, which at the end will return a string that is named first name. And I'm not able to make any typos because it is just a selection from the list. This is cool. And if I completely use that specific feature, then this leads me to the last sample where I was using that specific table object. You see the same code. It's an I entity. It's based on the session source, but now the create new for table person uses first time this specific table object and says table.person returns a string that says person. With put value, I can now get the first name, the last name, the central account, the UID department as before. The hard coded values have to be hard coded like before. There's nothing other else to do because there are no objects for my brain. And then I can use in all other places this specific table object. As you easily can see, these table objects are a little bit more to type, but the advantage is that I'm not able to do any typos. They not completely avoid me to understand my database because I have to know about the rules in the database. For example, if I want to go to a foreign key, I have to know this field have to start with UID underscore. Without that, it's hard to find something. Nevertheless, once you know a little bit about your database model, you are easy just to type these table objects instead of adding strings. Last but not least, if I just execute that specific script and show you the result, you will easily see we will have three times the same content. That means we will have three different options to write the same code. And here we are, we have just run the script and down here, you can see three times different ways to get the same information. There are my three objects, all of them showing the same values. And the reason is you have three options to write the same code. And you can now decide on your own what type of code fits best to your needs. And my personal recommendation will be use the table object. It helps you to avoid typos.